This is Paul from Electric Scooter Guide, and today I'm gonna to show you the best way to adjust your mechanical disc brakes. If your scooter has a mushy brake lever and you're not getting quite the brake grip that you're looking for, it's probably just a cable adjustment. And it's pretty easy, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's especially likely to happen in the early days of ownership with your scooter because the brakes wear in and you get some slack. To adjust that, the thing to check is to see, does it need a little bit or a lot? If it needs a lot, you wanna go straight to the cable clamp. You're gonna take an Allen wrench, loosen this, hold onto the cable here, slide it forward about as far as you can, and lock it down again. Usually, you're gonna end up with enough slack to where it's not dragging. In this case, it's dragging a little bit, so I'm just gonna back off just a little bit. If you just need to make a small adjustment, you can do that via the adjuster here. Some of these just have a plastic knob, and some are going to have a lock nut. This one has a, it has a lock nut, and it happens to be eight millimeters. So I'm gonna take an open end wrench and unlock the lock nut. Then now I can uh, adjust the brake and add more tension if I need to. Uh, sometimes it helps to push the cable up this way as you're turning it, and sometimes you're gonna need a wrench to tighten up the brake. To tighten it, you're going to turn counterclockwise as viewed from above, and just turn a little bit, check for brake drag, and then turn a little more, about one sixth of a turn each time. I'm just starting to hear it drag, and once you get that, then you're gonna back off just a little bit, spin the lock nut down, and then lock it in place. Now, it looks like you're done, but you're only almost done. Because one of the things you need to check for is make sure that your brake light still works. You can get it to where it's so tight that you can't get the brake light to come on until long after the brakes are locked. It's important not only because you want people to see your brake light lighting up, but also because that's what triggers the regenerative brake. And this is true on uh, all scooters that have a combination of both. They use the brake light switch to uh, turn on the regenerative brakes. And so make sure you're getting both at the same time. And in this case, we're gonna have to back it off a little bit to get that brake light to come on at the same time the brakes do. Okay, so now we're getting brakes at the same time as the brake light, and we're good to go. So once you've adjusted the brake cable, if your brakes still aren't feeling just right, the next level of adjustment to go to is a simple caliper adjustment. To do that, you're just going to loosen the two bolts that hold the caliper in place from the top, uh, but one turn there and one turn out here. Spin the wheel, grab the brakes, and that grabbing the brakes is gonna center the caliper up on the rotor. And then while you're still holding the brakes, snug the caliper down a little bit at the front, a little bit at the back, and then the rest of the way down. And now you've matched the position of your caliper to the position of the rotor. And this might get you where you need to be. If that still didn't work, now you're gonna get into a full caliper adjustment, and that's what we're gonna do next. For a brake caliper adjustment, we want to start with the pads all the way out so we have lots of room to work and move the caliper around. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do is to release the brake cable using the, uh, the cable clamp right here and just let that slide all the way down so I've got lots of slack there. Loosening the cable gives us plenty of room with the outer brake pad, but to give us some space to work with the inner brake pad, we're gonna to have to uh, unlock it and adjust it out of the way. To unlock it, you use a two millimeter Allen typically, and then there is a little uh, grub screw back here, and you just have to back it off about one turn, and um, then you go to the adjuster, which is on the back side of the caliper. On this wheel, we're fortunate because there's no motor, and we're able to reach right through and adjust this. We're going to go ahead and turn this back out by one turn, and now we know we've got lots of room to, to move the caliper around. And we're going to release the caliper with these two mounting bolts. Not fully loose, but just enough to move it around uh, freely. And then with our eyeball, we're going to push the caliper forward and back. There are two slots right here and here that allows us to center up the rotor with the caliper. And there's generally a line that goes through the middle of the caliper. And you're just gonna start to line that up with the rotor 
and then lock it back down. Once we've done that, we can bring the rear pad back in and you're gonna go all the way back in that one turn you took out plus probably another half a turn. And it should be, you should start to feel some real drag at that point. So now, it's, now we're dragging. We're gonna back that off a quarter turn until it's free. Maybe that was a little too far. Let's go back in an eighth of a turn. And you just wanna find the spot where it just, the rear pad just almost touches or touches just every now and then. Now the rear pad is in a good spot. We're gonna lock that down. To set the position of the outer brake pad, we're just going to adjust the brake cable. And so we slide the arm up almost as far as it'll go and then back down just a little bit. Lock it down. Check for drag. And then take up the last bit of slack with the adjuster. About a sixth of a turn at a time until you get some brake drag and then back it off again until the wheel moves freely. The final step is to make sure that your brake light lights up when you grab the brakes. If you tighten the brake too much, you won't be able to get the rear brake light to light up even once the wheel is skidding. So make sure that you've got it adjusted so your brakes are on and your brake light is on at the same time. On most scooters, this won't be a problem. Once everything's working, lock down your lock nut. Double check to make sure the grub screw on the rear pad is also locked down. Check one more time for brake drag and for your brake light, and you're good to go. If you're still getting a lot of drag, or if you're getting a rubbing that's happening once per turn, and you can't seem to get it adjusted to the right place, you may have a bent brake rotor. And we've got another video for that. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments what repairs you'd like to see us take on next.